Welcome to Gulfstream today. Welcome to beautiful Gulfstream Park. Ron Nicoletti along with Acacia Courtney. We are starting one fantastic week in horse racing besides great racing here at Gulfstream Park. Of course, it is Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks week. Yes, it is, Ron. They had the Kentucky Oaks draw yesterday, drew the Kentucky Derby this morning, but the best place to watch the Kentucky Derby is right here at Gulfstream Park. We have one of the best parties, in fact, the best party in town. You can get a mint julep, that Kentucky Derby t-shirt, hat contest, the whole nine yards, Ron. Yeah, it was a great hat contest last year. Kish and I were part of it, and we had a, a great time. Uh, yeah, we, we didn't judge, but did you judge? <laughs> I don't think so. No, no that was actually judge. my first day working at Gulfstream <laughs> Park, so coming on a one-year your anniversary here. You know, we mentioned uh, also the Kentucky Oaks, which is on Friday, and we have advanced wagering on the whole Derby card, but also you can come in on Friday and bet the Kentucky Oaks Kentucky Derby double and the Derby pick three, which the Kentucky Oaks, the Woodford Reserve Classic, and the Kentucky Derby. So good reason to be out mm -hmm. here on Friday besides the great racing and uh, here, right here at Gulfstream and, of course, at uh, the Kentucky Derby and the Kentucky Oaks. So lots of uh, things to look forward to this week. Definitely. And another thing to look forward to is getting a chance to watch those Gulfstream horses and the Oaks and the Derby. We've been talking about this all along, and today we wanted to revisit the forward gal and Tecalita, who did win that for trainer Michael Mapp. She was the number two that day. She drew post number 11 in the Kentucky Oaks, and Pretty impressive performance from her. She did finish second, actually, behind Salty in the Gulfstream Park Oaks as well. Salty drawing outside in post 14 in y the Oaks. Yeah, post 14. The Tecalita, very impressive here. You know, this particular day uh, when Tecalita comes closing was a day that was not favoring horses that came from off the pace. So besides the good performance, uh, you know, came from a little bit off the pace. And I thought it was very game performance. You can see her in the stretch just running very well in there. So she will be in there. She's post 11 in the forward gal. And as we mentioned, that will be on Friday. Friday afternoon. Yes, it will be. So we're really excited about all of that. And as we said, uh, the Derby draw this morning, and um, we'll be uh, trying to figure that out a little bit as well. And it's uh, not an easy puzzle to watch, but of course we do have uh, several horses running here. I sure cry, always dreaming. Um, some interesting things happening there, but it didn't seem like anything really crazy happened in terms of the post draw. No, we'll be showing the uh, the odds a little later on and the post position draw and the four one favorite uh, classic empire so uh, uh, it sort of worked out the way we thought it would no one uh, that uh, uh, any of the three or four meaningful ones that you want to say are not in ridiculous posts let's put right. it that way so we'll see how that plays out but let's uh, talk about today the Wednesday card and let's run through our wagering menu of course we started every day with our early pick five which is in race number one this afternoon and the rolling super high five we're starting it with over seven thousand dollars in that pool and that'll be in race number two and of course any race with seven or more runners we have the rolling super high five and every time we have a carryover like this it skyrockets yes they're probably going to send it in on that and then we do have a carryover in the rainbow six as well that's building more than thirty two thousand dollars that starts in the fourth race today just a 20 cent wager yeah we end the day with the final pick five acacia will show you that ticket so the rainbow six starting to build and uh, the week is starting to build right <laughs> here on wednesday afternoon so uh, no better time than to start right now with race number one one mile on the turf these are claims Phillies and Mares three and up, non-winners of three races in life, or three-year-olds. We do have a couple of scratches. One is significant is the two. That is uh, Atlantic Sunrise, the morning line favorite in there. Also scratch the main track, only number seven horse in here, and that is feeling awesome. And jockey change on the four, make the rider Carlos Montalvo. And uh, interested to see how you... Uh, Put your ticket together. Something fell on the stage. That's <laughs> a little bit of commotion to start things out. We'll give you a look at my early pick five ticket. So no single for me today. I did have a tough time narrowing in on some of those horses, but tried to keep it affordable. So just $48 for me. Uh, using two horses to kick things off. I really liked that morning line favorite that did end up scratching. So two by two, three horses in the third, two in the fourth, spreading with four in the fifth. I'm trying to beat the favorite in there. So uh, just using... Uh, two to start things off, though. Yeah, and you know, I, I miss the same. I liked Atlantic Sunrise, but the horse I was, you know, thinking that, ha you know, had a real good chance to win is the horse that stayed in in here, and that's the number six, Smart Romance. And this one is dropping to this 12-5 level this afternoon. After following her $16,000 two-lifetime score in January, she comes back, she runs six, but is, again, considerably tougher. It was a $50,000 starter allowance uh, last time out, so I think this is the spot for her, and she's spotted well. I absolutely agree with you. She was my second pick, and I did scratch into her, but I think it's pretty key as well
well because Atlantic Sunrise promised to be the main pace setter in here and I did think that she would be the main controlling speed. Now Queen of Silence is not slow out of the gate. She'll probably be forwardly placed but I did think that that opened up the door for uh, Smart Romance to dictate the pace from the outside and to be uh, on the front end early. You mentioned the start allowance competition she faced last time. She was a huge price that day. Unfortunately she was just outclassed but I thought her race winning against 16 non-winners of two, two starts back was very strong and definitely could win this. Well we have our second and third selections flip-flop here. Here, Queen of Silence is the three. Turn it back to mile. Track the pace. Finish third against similar. Going a mile in the 16th. Think, think a logical contender. You went with the five forever, for always. Who's hoping for a clean trip this time out? Yes, yeah. unfortunately did uh, stumble over a, a uh, another horse last time out comes out of that same race, but prior to that had been knocking at the door. She is just two for 40 on form, but I did think that she could get a share in here. Well, if you look at those three races before the miscue, uh, you know, last race she was fifth against 16 mm -hmm. types, so the drop 12-5 should help this afternoon. With that said, we'll flip the page, go to race two, and stay on the turf. Five furlongs. These are claimers three and up, non-winners of two in life, $16,000, and we do have a, a clean slate in here with no scratchy jockey changes, and as we mentioned, not not only is the rain, uh, super high five starting here with over 7,000, our first of two pick fours this afternoon, and uh, we both went with the number three on top, and that is Tempter. And Tempter was kind of a tough horse, I thought at least, to like last time out because he did actually break his maiden through disqualification, and then they stretched him out to two turns, stepped him up in class, and he actually ran okay last time. La that race last time out, it looked like he was he was forwardly placed along the rail, but several other horses really wanted to be on the lead, and then he was forced to settle back, waiting for room, and he did kind of drift off the rail a bit. So I imagine that's the main reason for adding the blinkers, but the biggest thing is the drop in class and the cut back in distance. Well, let's show your stat on Christophe Clement with that number three over the last five years. Second start after the layoff. First time blinkers on the turf, so we narrowed it down. He's three for 12, 25%, 25% in the money that you win, and that's it. <laughs> and a dollar and 11 return of investment over the last five years. And it is Christophe Clement. And I, I know you were right that the horse was put up via disqualification, mm -hmm. you know, at the distance. I think five furlongs might be this horse's best distance in here. I totally agree with you. And if you go back to that race where he did break his maiden I think that the horse that was disqualified actually would have won anyway if he hadn't caused that trouble but I do think that Tempter finds the right field today and maybe again those blinkers will help him to keep from drifting but a horse that's been knocking on the door lately Ron is to the outside I think you you finally jumped off the grand junior <laughs> bandwagon but I did want to uh, show his last performance because I do think that he'll take money because of that this is uh, back on April 20th he's the number three that day so he was towards the back actually a little bit keen and he went to the outside and we'll let it roll there because he ends up being just all over the place <laughs> that's the best way I can describe it. you can see it moving very very strongly now and um, I'll just freeze it right there and if I could get this uh, spotlight here let's see illustrator not working for me at the moment but he's out on the outside there and uh, we'll just let it roll there now and he's Again, he's kind of all over the place. He doesn't really look completely settled. He's moving strongly on the outside, though, and he just misses a neck. Unfortunately, that's what he's done in his last two races, so not quite sure um, if he's going to be able to do this again, but he has run strongly to close. Yeah, I broke my heart two times in a row, so I backed <laughs> off. I got him on the ticket, but not on top. I, I went with the two horse in second. I'll tell you why, and that's Zeus Odin. This one, second at this level, uh, uh, back on February 11th, dropped. Trouble outing last time out. Who did he face? Rocket fast track record holder. Pay any price. That was a 25 optional claimer last time out. This is the spot, you know, non-winners of two in life where this horse can run well. Mm -hmm. Certainly could. And I think he's going to be one of the main pace setters in here, which really could be the key for him. Because last time out, he certainly wasn't going to be the <laughs> pace setter when you're running against the likes of pay any price. And uh, there was just some other very strong horses in that field. He was, was not an easy race at all. So he drops back down the last time that he ran at this level. He was a pretty well be in second, but I do certainly think he fits. And I threw in the one graphite I third in the trio of sprints at this level and distance goes to the grass. He was five wide last time out against state bred runners on the dirt. I think he grabs a minor share. He certainly could. And for a long shot price, I used the six. Sir Charles dropping in class has had one race locally since shipping in from the fairgrounds and now uh, looks to be in a much better position. Well, race three this afternoon, again, on the turf at seven and a half furlongs, claim his Phillies and Mass three and up, non-winners of two races in life, $10,000 scratch to two Melody Croon and the main track only number seven, U. 
S Diva, and uh, I went to the inside with the one, you went with the three, Little Shade. And we'll go back and show the last race for Little Shade. It was beaten just by a neck by Beauty of a Day. So you can see Little Shade there on the front end, um, and I'll just uh, let it roll from there. The number eight is Beauty of a Day, who does end up winning. But I thought Little Shade was very game to hold on when I uh, got to the lead there. Held very strongly as others were chasing. And now we'll freeze just on the outside there. Um, Beauty of a Day is on the outside, the number eight with that big blaze. And now we'll let it roll. She does end up closing and gets the win this day. But again, I thought it was a big performance from Little Shade to hold on. Still very game <laughs> coming down to the wire. Yeah, I mean, pretty nice performance. I may have got him on, on the uh, her on the ticket for all the reasons mm -hmm. you just shown right there. But I did go to the inside with the one blossom in time. Not that I'm not going to use both of these horses in here. And we basically are in agreement in this race. Blossom in time. Now in the Leo Gabriel Jr. Barn. This is a daughter of Flower Alley. She debuts locally. She ended a two-race campaign at the fairgrounds with a 25 maiden victory going about uh, the about distance of a mile. That's what they have that little star for. If you're looking in your past performances it's so it's more like seven and a half furlongs than it is a mile so I think this horse is going to run well right in there and then I know we both used the number five well uh, the five flying dude I did uh, throw this one on and if there is some other pace in here a little shade it does look to be speedy we showed that last time I think her hand was even more forced because she did break from the rail and blossomed in time has the rail today and does like to be on the front end so if there was something to close into I did think that flying dude could pick up the pieces. And Flying Dude is a daughter of First Dude. <laughs> yes. So very confusing sometimes. <laughs> yeah, turning back, stalk the page, yielded late, all the reasons you mentioned. So, And you see we both have the four in, fourth in there, and that's Cindy's Candy, a little bit of a price if you want to throw it on the rolling super high five tickets throughout the afternoon. Or Right there we have the exact the trifecta. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we will show you uh, my Rainbow Six ticket, not our uh, mine. Yours. Yes. We'll be right back. At Express Bet, we celebrate the champions that make horse racing great. That's why we provide more ways to bet from more places than ever. We've built an entire family of brands to give players more of the rewards they deserve, give bettors the information they need to win, and provide a community for horse bettors. Because the best way to support the champions of horse racing is to champion horse racing. Express Bet. We are racing. Welcome back to Gulf, Gulfstream today and welcome back to Gulfstream Park. Fourth race, four and a half furlongs, maiden special weight, two-year-olds. We got a special treat for you before we delve into my Rainbow Six and this race. We're going to show you the post position and odds of the Kentucky Derby, of course, being run on Saturday. So we're going to show one, the first 10, and there's the first 10 up there. And you see them lines and uh, looking at Lee is on the inside at 20 to 1. And you see uh, Gunavera, 15 <laughs> to 1, right there in post number 10. So uh, Javier Castellano, of course, that's our local uh, horse that we're going to be rooting for in there. And then we'll show you the other 10 in here. Absolutely, and you can see Always Dreaming, our Florida Derby winner, coming from post five. And then we'll look at the second half of the field. Probably um, a bigger story. Nobody has won from post 17, I believe you were telling me. Right. Uh, that is where Irish War Cry will break, and that is how the gates are separated. Yeah, that's right? where the gates separate. And 16 has been very good. Look, gate and tap writ will be in there. And then look on the outside of 30 to 1, the horse with the one eye patch, ridden by our own Tyler Gaffleon. Yes, and Patchy does not have a left eye so he will not see the horses to his inside so maybe that is a plus for him but um, he definitely has his own fan <laughs> following it's pretty cool to see how he really has attracted a lot of attention he thinks he's in post number one so <laughs> there's no problem for that and that's it so that is the uh, how we uh, the derby was drawn today so uh, just a couple of days away and as we mentioned the biggest derby party right here at beautiful Gulfstream Park now we'll get to this fourth race four and a half furlongs as I mentioned maiden special 
overweight two-year-olds, and it's where the Rainbow Six starts. Over $32,000 in that pool. Let's quickly go to my ticket, and you'll see it right here. And I have a single today in its race, number seven, and that is the two-horse in there, and that is South, who's uh, turning back to five and a half. I thought it was very impressive winning last time out. Then four and three, forty-three dollars and twenty cents. Went three deep in here with these two-year-olds. We have a field of five. Would have liked to go five deep. <laughs> I, I totally agree with you. I do think um, after the scratches, this is absolutely a place that you could press the all button. And one of the things I really like about these two-year-old races, kicking off the Rainbow Six sequence, is that you do have the chance to see how they're acting, see how they look when they're debuting on the track. There's no past performances to look at, just uh, unless the horse has had a start before. But at this point in the year, no past performances for what is left. So pretty nice to be able to get a look at them before. And another important thing, you can see who they're betting, because a lot of times yeah. two-year-olds, uh, they know more about these two-year-olds <laughs> than if there was no past performances. So I started it off with the number three horse in here at Kingston Pike. is by Osiah Awesome, of course. And I want to show you Osiah's stat on, on Awesome. Uh, on Kingston Pike, awesome, of course. This one, two-year-old, first-time starters on the dirt. So that means first time out. Pretty solid performance. It's 17 of 90, 19%. So that's two-year-old, first-time starters on the dirt. Yes, definitely a good stat to look at. And there are some really interesting sires in here. We already know Awesome, of course. He's been very established uh, sire already, a very prolific sire, of course. And this one, a little light on the work tab, but the most recent work was very sharp on April 9th, three furlongs and 35 and one. And we know that the barn does a great job getting horses ready. Well, let's show you a stat on trainer Ralph Nix with two-year-old first-time starters, maiden special weight on the dirt right here at Gulfstream Park. He is 14 for 40. He's 29%. <laughs> He's 69% in the money. And, of course, $1.66 return of investment. Of course, you have to uh, not spend much time at Gulfstream. You know how well Ralph Nix does with his two-year-old first time starting. Yes, already this year we just started seeing those two-year-old races, and he has had a two-year-old winner uh, in one of the cult races last week. So I definitely one to look at. I did land on the number seven, Admiral Jimmy. I was pretty uh, interested in this one. He's by Jimmy Creed. Uh, he, of course, he did win the grade one at Malibu, and he actually um, had a, a full debut already. Jimmy, I don't know yet who debuted on April 20th for Ralph Nix, actually. He did finish fourth in that race, and I thought that he actually was uh, pr making a very nice presentation in the paddock prior to that race, so we'll be interested to see how Admiral Jimmy looks. He is kin to stakes winner Velvet Mood, who did win at first asking as well, so some precocity on the bottom side. And it, it is from Todd Pletcher, and you um, maybe do proceed with a little bit of caution because you know that Todd Pletcher horses probably are going to take a lot of money in a field like this, but looking at stats for that barn, two-year-old first-time starters, made in special weight on the dirt at Gulfstream. So I made it very specific, and it's still a big sample size and still big percentages of 33% win and 55% in the money, and nearly even ROI. So that's that is what I did land on, but I absolutely agree with you. To start the Rainbow Six, you probably want some coverage. Yeah, one of the horse that we both used quickly was Run Ready. He's the son of Oxbow, debuting for Eric Gio. And talking about workout, this one shows six Palm Meadows workouts, including a recent half-mile bullet in 47 and 4. CJ McMahon will be in the saddle. So this horse has been working and working steadily. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, of course, Oxbow, the 2013 Preakness winner. So it will be very interesting to see how his progeny do hitting the track. Well, race number five this afternoon, seven and one half furlongs on the turf, a three and up, non is of two in life, and eight in the field with no scratches or jockey changes. And this is where Acacia's final pick five ticket starts. We'll give you a look at my ticket, and I did spread in this race <laughs> here. I wanted some coverage. As I said, I'm trying to beat the favorite in here, but using four horses to start things off too deep, Three in the seventh, which I believe was where your single was, <laughs> so we're back to normal. Then at two and two, forty-eight dollars for me. Well, you didn't use my uh, the, the favorite in here, the morning line favorite in this race, and that is the number three, Gold Tierra, two for four in the money on the turf. Drops to the ten thousand dollar level. First start since finishing third, as the odds on choice at thirty-two lifetime claimer going six and a half rolling. But this was on the turfway synthetic surface, and I want to show you stat. Wesley Ward, synthetic to turf, all claiming levels. He's nine for 38, 24%. 50% in the money with almost an even $2 return of investment. And everybody knows how well Wesley Ward does with this and synthetic to turf in here. Absolutely. And th that was probably my fault. It should be one, two, five, three for me. So I did actually use this horse yeah, um, in fourth. <laughs> and this it will be on my pick five ticket. Um, 
sometimes you're typing up the numbers <laughs> and you get a little bit messed up. But I, I agree with you. It's just this this horse is in such a head scratcher for me. And looking at his past performances, yes, he does have a nice work on the Palmetto's turf course, but that is no news from Wesley Ward Barn. <laughs> We're very used to very sharp works and coming in and showing a lot of speed. He showed a lot more speed on the turf. And his last turf race was in Gulfstream Park West where he was running a maiden company. He broke his maiden on the synthetic. And even in his turf races prior to that in Kentucky, he was in maiden special weight company. Now he's at the bottom at the $10,000 level, which is just what made me kind of take a little bit of a cause for pause with this horse. I, I certainly do respect the connections, but I did go elsewhere. And on top of that, I saw this race as having some other speed, uh, potentially from Zarmo to the inside of him. So I went with a horse that I thought would sit a stocking trip to the rail, and that is the number one, Mr. Sam, who was, I was hoping to get a little bit of a better price on. He's going to add blinkers on today for Armando de la Cerda. And last time out, I thought it was a solid race against tougher company. So uh, he was third last time. Should be in a good spot today. Yeah, and uh, that is, uh, you know, now that I know you have the three on you, I feel better in here. Let's go to race six this afternoon. One mile and one sixteenth on the turf. Starter optional claim of four and up. Starter for 16 or less. Or the optional claiming price of $25,000. Couple of scratches to let you know about in here. The six, Handsome Jack. And the number seven, Mr. Trickle. I had the uh, Mr. Handsome Jack on the bottom part of my ticket. So I, I still was stuck with the number two. You went to the inside with the number one global entry who's stepping up the competition today but not really not really he did win against 16,000 starter uh, starter allowance company last time out and he was breaking from the rail he sat a perfect stocking trip that day and he won against a horse named on star who was actually a mare running against the boys and we'll see her later on today in the eighth race so maybe a little bit of homework <laughs> to look at there but I thought it was a very game performance from global entry he's already shown that he can put back-to-back -back winners together he notched the non-winners of two and non-winners of three consecutively. That was with two different trainers as well. He's just a horse that's been in excellent form lately. Well, I meant, excuse me, I mentioned the distance of this race and why I went to the two perfect days, stretching out to a mile and 16. Ten races at this distance, three wins and two seconds, rallied to finish second against similar, going seven and a half uh, and a mile respectively. It's Angel Rodriguez, Edgar Zayas. The added distance today is key for me putting this horse on top mm. of my ticket. I agree with you. And he does have to, um, you can say, well, maybe he has to improve off of those last couple of races. But if you look at his race, two starts back, he ran second to class and cash. And who is really just that? He's all class and he makes a lot of cash because he just keeps winning. So I think that there's absolutely no shame in that. And last time out, it was, uh, I thought, a pretty solid performance from him. A horse to get some frequent flyer miles is the 5 DS. Turned back to mile and 16th. Locally shipped up to Tampa. Rallied to win a start a handicap. Now it's contested in a mile and 3 eighths or 11 furlongs. The Geldings 3 for 7 on this course and 2 for 3 at the distance. So like Skullstream, uh, went up there and ran exceptionally well. I absolutely think you have to respect this horse. He's shipping in from Tampa. He gets Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle. And Tammy Levy does do a good job of placing her horses in the right spot. Well, race number 7 this afternoon is a five and a half for a long claimer. Phillies and Mayors, three and up, non-winners of two in life, or three-year-olds, 30000 down to $25,000. And this is where I had my single in here, and the number two where you went three deep. And I went with South, and I'll tell you why. Turn it back to five and a half. Return from the layoff led every step of the way to, on this uh, two-way $35,000 claiming victory going three quarters of a mile. I, I just thought at the performance, I'm going to go with two in a row for this horse. And that's absolutely fair. Moved into the barn of Stan Gold and led every step of the way, and I thought it was a huge performance from her. Um, she that was also actually after switching from the turf to the dirt as well, and off of a bit of a freshening. So everything really just came together. She does have an inside pose, which should be good for her. I saw some other speed to the outside, but maybe she just will be coming in stronger. I used her for all of those reasons that you said, but I did like the number eight, Liberty Gibbet, who you you didn't use at all, um, which is funny. It's named after her. No. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. And what does it mean? It means somebody that, that talks a lot, basically. Oh, really? So maybe it is. Maybe it is. But Flippity Jimmit, uh, she is usually just, um, as we've noticed throughout the afternoon, she is kind of a more flighty filly. She's very slender. And I just really think the class drop is going to be key for her. I wanted to go back and show her race on March 8th because she did have some trouble at the start. And I think it could be a little bit more forgiving because of that. She's the number six that day. And we'll show the head on plus a few strides and we'll just let it roll from there. And she she gets bumped there. She breaks out a little bit to the left, and now she's going to get totally squeezed back and just uh, be 
behind the rest of the field. And now we'll show the pan shot. And you want to keep your eyes out for the number six. There she is on the uh, in the black silks. So you can see her back there behind next to the number three. So unfortunately, she's now back further from away, further away from the rest of the field. And uh, that I just think was really what compromised her at the start because she is a filly that likes to either be close to the pace or even on the lead. Well, we're not in too much of agreement here, and I have to go back <laughs> and revisit that horse. I used the four graces. Spirit will make her first ever try on the dirt after a respectable three-race sprint campaign on the turf. Included a debut victory and a second-place finish at the $30,000 level, so a little bit of guesswork on my part. But the horse, I just like its current form. Yes, she certainly is in good form. She's going to be trying the dirt for the first time in here. I did respect the three Celtic Moonlight, who's also getting a drop in class. Early on in her career, she was a horse that was in excellent form breaking her maiden by eight lengths in special eight company so we'll see if she can recapture some of that well let's go to race eight this afternoon seven and a half furlongs on the turf allowance optional claim of fillies and mass three-year-olds and up for the optional claiming price twenty five thousand dollars real nice betting racing here and you started it off with the number six in here and that is vendita i did well i talked about the number three on a star earlier who faced the boys last time and i see you didn't even use that <laughs> one at all and i actually almost put her on top in here but i did land on the number six vendita who talk about a horse that's been in excellent form. She's won her last three races and been very impressive in that. And what I love about her is that she's shown dimension. She wired the field two starts back. She couldn't be caught. And last time she came from off of the pace. So I think that she's a horse that's shown her versatility. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Emmy Salheramio is going to be in the saddle once again for Patrick Biancone. And she just really, I think, outclasses the field. Well, I went with the five, sweet Ella. You have way down there on your tick was given the time to regroup after breaking out with at the start taking the overland route racing wide finished the fifth in a tough 25 optional claimer back on march 11th it is trained to todd pletcher want to show you i guess it's a cautionary stat uh, a todd pletcher layoff of 31 to 60 days optional claimers on the turf right here at Gulfstream Park. He's five for 45, only 11%, 47% in the money, and only a 71 cent return of investment. So I guess there's cause to uh, <laughs> be concerned. Well, I, I like seeing that stat since I did use her a little bit further down. Of course, I respect the horse and she's put up some nice performances. I just thought there were a couple others stronger in here. One of them being on a star, and I talked about this horse already, so I wanted to go back and show that race. This was against the boys and she was very, very game. This is on April 19th. She was the number three that day. And she broke sharply, then settled back. And we'll just let it roll from there, picking it up at the quarter pole. She made an early move. She's the gray. She's easy to stop, uh, spot in here. Made an early move heading into the final turn. Shifted out, got the lead. And global entry was just a little bit stronger this day. Again, she did face the boys. That's global entry in the shadow roll, the one horse coming on the outside. And again, I just really thought she was game in here. Maybe you can argue, well, that took a little bit out of her. She had stepped up in class that day, but I thought that she proved her class with that performance. I remember that name, global entry. That's the homework you were That's talking about. That's the homework. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the final race this afternoon. Race number nine, five furlongs on the turf. Maiden claim is Phillies and Mares three and up 12,000. 500. Please note the number five horse will race without Lasix, so no first time Lasix. And uh, I think the one to beat in here is the four daddies, Eris. I think so too. She gets a class drop in here. Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle. She didn't actually run badly last time. She did have to check, unfortunately, early on in the race and knocked out of position a bit. But um, I think that the class relief, and hopefully she gets in a good spot early, she should be in a good position. Number six, Southern and Sassy will give it one more try <laughs> at trying to break her maiden after failing as the favorite in consecutive races at this level and distance. She's zero for 20, but they're putting Edgar eyes in. Is this the combination that gets this one over the top? Maybe it is. She <laughs> certainly burned a lot of money going off in the fa as the favorite in her last too. She is 0 for 20, as you said. She does have some speed, and this is a wide-open affair, so this just might be the day for her. And classic act we both use getting class relief today. Also, 20,000, including a seventh-place finish behind uh, Daddy's heiress. That was back on March 25th, so a horse that figures to grab a share. In I, here. I do think so. There could be a fair bit of speed from the outside, so she might be able to close a bit. Well, uh, we are not too much in agreement today, which makes it all the more uh, yes. exciting for us, too, because we could yell at each other throughout <laughs> the afternoon and say, I told and you so. And it's good for you because <laughs> you get better value on your bets. Exactly <laughs> right. So uh, good luck with all your selections. And uh, don't forget, a little later on, we'll show you those uh, post position and odds of the Kentucky Derby and uh, should be a wild day of racing. Yes, it should. Good luck, everyone. We have to take care of these horses that, you know, give us so much joy. Being a credit